Hello and good evening. Thank you everyone for joining us for the Brooklyn Technical High School Virtual College Fair. As you enter this room, you may notice that your video and audio capabilities are turned off. You are still able to ask questions to our panelists using the Q&A button at the bottom of your screen. If you have a specific question for one institution, please include the school's name in your question. Also, you can sign up for more sessions like this on our website. And tonight's session will be available um, probably early next week because this session will be recorded. You can visit our website at strivescan.com slash Brooklyn Tech. Now, without further ado, our first presenter for this evening is Sacred Heart University. Hi everyone, my name is Morgan Ford and I'm one of the admissions counselors here at Sacred Heart University. So just to get into it, Sacred Heart was founded in 1963 by the Diocese of Bridgeport. And we're actually the first Catholic institution to be founded by the lay people and that's where we get our name, the Pioneers. We're the second largest Catholic university in New England and we have a current undergraduate enrollment of 5,400. When you factor in postgraduate degrees as well as part-time students, we sit at just above 8,000. So we're considered a medium-sized school. We have a ton of endorsements over the past few years. I do wanna highlight a few for you. First, we're considered to have the best uh, physical therapy program in the state of Connecticut, as well as the best nursing program. We were listed on Princeton Review's top 10 most engaged in community service. And that's because we racked in over 100,000 hours on a local, national, and global scale. Just to go over some academics. We have six colleges and universities that you can choose to study. First is the College of Arts and Sciences, the Isabel Farrington College of Education, the Jack Walsh College of Business, the Davis and Henley College of Nursing, and the College of Health Professions. The St. Vincent's College is mostly for certifications and associate degrees. We have 60 plus majors and concentrations for you to choose. And if you're looking to go undecided, you can go undecided as a whole, as well as specifically within the College of Health Professions and the College of Business. We have 40 plus masters and doctorate programs for you to choose for as well. And a lot of these programs can be combined and accelerated for postgraduate degrees. Our average class size is 22 and our student to teacher ratio is 13 to one. Some other academic ac opportunities are as our honors, excuse me, our Thomas More Honors Program, which are automatically vetted for when you apply to university, as well as study abroad options at Sacred Heart. We have two campuses, one in Luxembourg and Dingle, Ireland, and then we have 60 other programs in 30 different countries around the world. We do have a first year experience program, which, fo which focuses on advising, as well as our FYE course. So it's an eight week program throughout the semester that focuses on your transition from high school to college, as well as living at home to living on your own. Our, our Center for Career and Professional Development will help you bridge that gap between campus and career with resume building as well as networking opportunities and internship search. For our undecided students, we do have the Discover You program, which helps you decide um, what you want to do in terms of your passions and career options. And this is just to improve your return on investment. So here's some study abroad options that I mentioned as well. So all of our students can study abroad regardless of program of study. A lot of times universities will tell you that you can't study abroad due to, due to the rigorousness of your program. But if you're coming to Sacred Heart, we wanna make sure that you can get involved in whatever you'd like to. So just to go over some of our residence halls, first is meet Merton and Seton. And these are our main residence halls for freshmen that's located in the heart of campus. They're comprised of doubles and triples and it's corridor style housing. So it's a traditional college level housing as well as communal bathrooms on each floor and they are swipe card access. Roncalli Hall is our 10 story high rise located directly across the street from the university. And this is home to our living learning communities. These are also comprised of doubles and triples. However, they are suite style housing and there are common lounges, study rooms on each floor with also a fitness facility on the first floor. And these are also swipe card access. Tucson Hall is one of the more popular places to live. And this is home to our Thomas More Honors Program as well as our living learning community. It is pod style housing with four students to a pod connected by a half bath with common shower rooms. And there's a ton of study and lounge space as you can see from that top photo. This is Bergoglio Hall. This is also home to our honors housing as well as common freshman housing. And this is pod style. So you'll have two students to a pod and they're connected by a full bath. 
There is a multi-purpose uh, fitness facility. I do know that our CrossFit team works out there. And we also have a multifunctional multimedia room. So if you're look looking to have gaming events or watching The Bachelor and Bachelorette with your friends, you're more than welcome to. And as you can see from that top photo, another beautiful place to stay and study in. So just to talk about the growth of Sacred Heart University, we've actually built 14 buildings in the past 15 years. So the first is the Center for Healthcare Education. Um, this is about a quarter of a mile down the road and it's home to our nursing and health profession students. A typical classroom is what you see right here on the right, but as you can see, it's not fully uh, filled up and that's just to keep our average class size as small as possible. You won't have any teacher's aides or student teachers. Your professor is gonna be your professor. This is West Campus. It's actually located about a quarter of a mile down the other way. Um, and this is home to our business and technology schools, our school of education, as well as our hotel management. We acquired this building from General Electrics before they moved up to Boston, I wanna say about three and a half years ago. And it's been fully renovated to be an academic mecca. You have, we have a traditional AI lab where students can learn about artificial intelligence in real time. And on the right is what a typical classroom would look like. This is the idea lab. It's mostly home, mostly used by our engineering students. However, any student does have can have access to this building. There's over a dozen drone, a dozen drones and 3D printers where students can create things in real time. I do know some of our nursing students did go down there for a project. Our Verizon iHub, which is something that I find most um, interesting about Sacred Heart, actually allows businesses in the local area to um, rent out these cubicle spaces in hopes for collaboration with students in real time. And this is just to foster networking opportunities, opportunities so you can have internships as well as full-time employment. The upper quad is about halfway done, and that's why the photo on the left looks a bit more lifelike than the photo on the right. So once it's done in fall 2021, it will be housing for all four years. It will also have a full gym as well as a dining hall. And this is also the Bobby Valentine Health and Recreation Center. Um, it's home for our club and intramural sports and our JP's diner as well. So just to go over some applications, um, requirements for Sacred Heart, here are some important deadlines. If you want, if you want to take a photo of that, more than welcome to. And we do require um, a, a official high school transcript and one letter of recommendation from a school counselor. You're not required to do an, intern an interview with me unless you really want to, but they are highly recommended. I get a ton of applications every year, so it's nice to get to meet my students. We've been test optional for the past four, 14 years, so you do not have to submit scores if you don't want to. And the average GPA of a non-nursing student is a 3.4. When you factor in nursing, it's gonna be a 3.7 due to its slightly um, com more competitive program. We do accept AP credits and IB credits as long as you take those exams and score a four or higher and any dual credit enrollments um, as long as you get a C or better in that class. Financial aid, to go over really quickly, um, every student will receive merit-based scholarships solely based on their GPA and there are other grants available um, via interest. Two forms you have to fill out to qualify for financial aid. First is the FAFSA and then the other is a CSS profile. Both will be available to you October 1st. Does anyone have any questions? All right, thank you, Sacred Heart. For students who do have questions, please utilize the Q&A feature to ask all our panelists questions, or if you have a specific question for one school, you can include that school's name in your question. Um, up next, we have St. Joseph's University. Good evening, all. I'm Brad Simon, Assistant Director for Undergraduate Admission at Hawk Hill, as we call our campus. St. Joseph's is founded as a Jesuit institution so if you're not familiar with that, it is a sect of Catholicism, heavily focused on lifelong learning and social justice, the impact you can make. So for us, we are similar in size to Sacred Heart with about 4,500 undergraduates, as well as some additional graduate and doctoral candidates. These students represent all 50 states as well as 50 nations. And in, when that breaks down into the classroom setting, it's about 23 students on average with an 11 to one student faculty ratio. Um, now, the campus community is very dynamic for the fact that we are perfectly situated right on the cusp of Philadelphia County and Montgomery County. So our 125 acre campus is not your typical city school. This is a true campus community with opportunities for quick access into that urban environment of downtown Philadelphia, sixth largest city in America, 
So this gives great opportunity for our students to do research um, as well as internships, cooperative education, cultural experiences, like a solid cheesecake, cheesesteak or a wonderful festival or concert. Uh, Philadelphia is a great hub for all things. So you definitely can find your fit on our campus as well as off. Now, when it comes to the student activities and involvement, we offer 20 Division I athletic programs, predominantly in the Atlantic 10 League, basketball being our most well-known and center point of campus, um, but also club level sports, intramural sports, and then more than 100 different clubs and organizations from Greek life to special interest groups like a baking club and an Irish dance team, very competitive cheer and hip hop dance teams as well. So there's a lot of different programs you can take part in. And when I work with you one-on-one, -on -one, we get the chance to really talk through what are the needs and interests of you. So I will be serving you as an admission and financial aid counselor throughout the entirety of this process. But this is a stepping stone and an opportunity for you to advance yourself and figure out your passions. So for us, we do see a great return on investment here with 97% of the class of 2019 finding full-time employment, going on for additional education, or committing to either the armed forces or a volunteer-based program, such as the Jesuit Volunteer Corps or Teach for America within six months of their graduation date. Now, academically, it's not imperative that you have your, map, your life mapped out for you. Our admission process is major blind, so you have more opportunity to really explore who you are and how that connects to an academic program to propel you into a career or additional education. To highlight just a few, we have our Hobbs School of Business, which is an AACSB accredited business school, offering 16 different programs, including food marketing, as well as family business and entrepreneurship. And we have additional programs that are newer to our, our, our campus, such as machine learning um, and, and things of that nature. Now, business is very strong for us, top accreditation level with the opportunity to, go, to engage in full-time paid experiences called cooperative education. Our Arts and Science College, which houses the majority of our programs, includes everything from English to communication and media studies to foreign languages, theology, and even some pretty unique programs in there as well, specifically on the um, minor end of it with data science and actuarial science being some of just the many offerings. And our final school is the School of Health Studies and Education. So if you're looking to take part in any level of education from young childhood or early development to secondary ed, there's something for you. And these students are in the classroom beginning their first semester and every semester on Hawk Hill. We also have our health studies major, which is a strong suit going into physical therapy, occupational therapy, physician's assistant programs. And then we also have our autism behavioral studies program, which is pretty unique, but has a campus component to it, our community component to it, where we do have a, a full um, camp as well as evening programming for the Philadelphia region and for to support families with an individual on the autism spectrum. Now with that, we are a four year school with many opportunities to advance your career into a masters and we have a select number of fifth year programs, including a MBA, um, reading specialist in education, research based psychology and many more. So that will continue to develop and we have a chance to talk directly one-on-one -on -one as we work through the process. Now, just some key pieces here. You can use the Common App or the St. Joseph's application to apply. No additional questions or supplemental essays are included in that. And our application is pretty much identical to that of the Common App. You can get both of those as early as August 1st to apply leading into your, uh, your senior year. Now, once that's submitted, we just need your official high school transcript and a minimum of one letter recommendation from an academic source but you determine your story. We have the belief of cure personalis, care for the whole being. So it's imperative that we see you as a whole individual. So please share more about additional letters of recommendation, a resume, an interview, art portfolio, mixtape. You define you. So I'm here just to learn about you and see if this is a great opportunity for you to succeed. We do offer early decision and early action. If you wanna hear early on in your senior year or if you're a transfer student on a rolling basis, but we have non-binding regular decision as our final option, which has a February 1st deadline. Now, I do have last year's deadlines here, but they will be the same for next year, just change that year. We are test optional, um, and it's been that way for a number of years. So you get to share your story, and I look through your full transcript. If you do feel like your SAT or ACT are beneficial, go ahead. But in the meantime, 
please ask away with your questions. And just know that we do have over 85% of our students engaged in in-person learning for this entire year. And we do offer in-person tours, but based on your comfort, you can also join us virtually for webinars and programs. So thank you so much tonight. Take it all in and enjoy. Um, and with that, please let us know. Thank you, St. Joseph's. Up next, we have Salve Regina University. Good evening, Brooklyn Tech. My name is Stephanie Dupuy, and I'm one of our Associate Deans of Undergraduate Admission at Salve Regina University. And I am also a proud graduate of the class of um, 2004 in our education program. I always start our talk um, about Salve by sharing a little bit about our history. Salve was founded 75 years ago by the Sisters of Mercy, making us a Catholic university. And the Sisters of Mercy are a unique group of nuns. Um, they originated in Dublin, Ireland, and they were the first group of nuns that didn't live in a cloistered setting. They lived out amongst the people in Dublin, most important to know, they lived amongst people who needed them most. So when they started Salve um, in Newport, Rhode Island, which is the beautiful location that we, um, we are now, um, they were educating young women to go into professions like healthcare, education, and social work. Um, so a lot of people know us for those programs, but we've obviously grown and changed through the years. We are co-ed as well. Here is on the right-hand side is a picture of our campus situated in Newport, Rhode Island, right on the Atlantic. Atlantic Ocean. Um, Newport is an incredible place, about four hours from New York City, a little over an hour from Boston. Um, we now have 2,100 undergraduate students, as well as graduate students and students in PhD programs as well. Um, oops, I didn't mean to skip ahead there. Um, our students are um, from 41 states and 21 nations. And it is also important to note that only 15% of our population is from the state of Rhode Island. So we are very resident campus. Most people are not, do not hail from the state of Rhode Island. Um, so they're coming to us from all over the Northeast, outside of the Northeast, um, across the country, as well as internationally as well. Salve is a liberal arts university, but we have about 50 undergraduate programs. Some of the larger programs are in nursing, education, biology, and the biomedical sciences, which include medical technology and chemistry, administration of justice, which is our criminal justice program, um, which has some incredible concentrations in things like cybersecurity, um, English communications and literature are another really popular area of study for our students. And one of the things that I liked best as a student was that I can study across many different disciplines. I actually had a double major in education and theater and a minor in English literature, and that is so common of our students. Our average class sizes are 18, and it is a 13 to one student to teacher ratio. All students do have a first year advisor who they meet with the summer before they start in order to select classes um, and talk about their academic goals. Getting into the courses that you need in your major um, early on are so imperative to ensure that you graduate in four years and that you can um, accommodate double majors and minors as you're studying with us. We have a qu quite a few minors as well and some pre-professional programming. Um, we've started quite a few um, three plus two and three plus three programs in partnership with other universities, two of the most um, popular and the newest ones for us are engineering and pharmacy. Um, the building that you see um, in this photo is actually the cornerstone of our campus. It is a Gilded Age man mansion built in the late 1800s. So if you come for a tour, this is where you begin. We've been very fortunate this year to have been able to remain open our classes in person and our students living on campus. Here's some examples of classrooms. You'll notice that they're not all traditional. Um, oftentimes our students are working in labs. The students in the right hand photo are actually in our cultural and historic preservation program doing an archaeological dig locally. Somebody has a lot um, going on on campus and off. 
first of all, we are in beautiful Newport, Rhode Island, and there are so many cultural um, opportunities, historic opportunities, and recreational um, things for you to get involved in. We have over 80 clubs and organizations, and we have 20 Division III varsity athletics programs as well. It is so important to make the Newport community, your community, as well as our campus community, and our students start off um, during their orientation um, doing service work with local community organizations that we partner with. Just some information about our um, what we're looking for in our application. Salve is a common app school. Your most important piece to your application is your transcript. And we have been SAT, ACT optional for years. We do look for letters of recommendation, um, one from a counselor and one from a teacher, although you can always submit extra letters of recommendation from, pe from people who can share about your academic journey and what it is that you're involved in outside of the classroom. The only program students have to apply directly to is Salve nursing program and we do have a direct entry nursing program um, that students will be admitted to when they apply. We have a few different options for applying. November 1 is our early action and our early decision program. Um, early action obviously non-binding, early decision binding. We do require that November 1st deadline for all of our nursing applicants. We did add an early action 2 deadline this year to give students a little extra time knowing that it was kind of a wild year um, and we we, um, are going to continue offering that regular decision is February 1st and for financial aid our students just re, uh, have to submit the FAFSA. Almost 100% of our families receive some sort of financial assistance and we do review every student for merit awards that um, go up to $25,000 per year, renewable each year, as long as you maintain a 3.0 GPA. I did drop my contact information as well as our visit information in the chat box. Um, we are doing in-person tours, but we do have quite a few things happening virtually. I read all of our applications from New York City and look forward to um, getting to know you and helping you to see if Salve is a good fit for your college journey. My contact information is here and in the chat box. Have a wonderful evening. Thanks so much. Thank you, Salve. Up next, we have University of Scranton. All right. Thank you so much, Kyle. I'm going to go ahead and share my screen and present. All right, everyone. My name is Melissa Prislocki. I'm an assistant director of admissions at the University of Scranton, also an alum of the class of 2015, where I got my bachelor's degree. So a little bit about us, we are a Catholic and Jesuit university founded in 1888, originally as St. Thomas College. And in 1942, we did become one of the 27 Jesuit colleges in the country. Um, we are the second Jesuit college on the fair tonight, just next to St. Joe's this evening. Um, and with those Jesuit ideals, um, they're rooted deep in everything that we do at the university. So at Scranton, you will receive a mind, body, spirit education, a well-rounded education at Scranton, um, living by the philosophy of giving back to those in need while becoming a well-rounded individual and striving for excellence. At Scranton, a little bit of us by the numbers, our undergraduate population is around 3,800 students, leaving the first year class to be between 940 and 960 students. It's a really comfortable number. You'll have familiar faces in your classes, you'll have good groups of friends, but you won't know every single person on campus. It's a pretty good balance between knowing people and not knowing people. Our average class size is around 20. Um, we do cap our courses at 35, no matter what type of course it is, but average around 20. And then we have a 13 to one student to faculty ratio. So you'll get to know your peers in your classes and also your faculty members. And then lastly, I'd like to point out that we have an 88% first year retention rate. So 88% of our first year students are returning for their sophomore year. And this is above the national average of like universities, which is at 80%. A little bit about our academics at Scranton. We have about 68 majors, 48 minors, 34 grad programs, and 39 different concentrations. So you have the ability to create your own academic experience. We do have pre-health and pre-law advisory programs. Pre-health is for anyone interested in pre-med, pre-dental, pre-optometry, pre-podiatry, anything that falls into that pre-health category. You still choose a major on these programs, and then you have an advisor to help you along the way. 
We do have some faculty student research programs on campus if you're interested in research, being on a research team. And then we do have a number of accelerated graduate programs as well. When it comes to living on campus, housing is guaranteed all four years. Your first two years, you'd have to live on campus being out of the commuting distance, but it is guaranteed all four years. We do have a deal of student support on campus through our counseling center, student health services, academic support services, and all other options on campus. We do offer more than 80 clubs and organizations for students to be a part of on campus, academic to service to arts and culture, and some of the fun social things happening on our college campus. If you're interested in athletics, we are division three and we play in the Landmark Conference. If you're not interested in D3 teams, we do have club sports and intramural leagues for you as well, which are also super fun and easy to be a part of. Now a little bit about the application and admissions process. On the screen, you can see our accepted student profile or middle 50% of ranges. So what this means is that of 100% of our accepted students, 25% of students will fall below these ranges and 25% above, and this is just the middle place. We are test optional for majority of our programs historically. We also added test exempt into our application process. So if you are having trouble sitting for either the SAT or ACT because of the pandemic and everything that's going on, you can apply test exempt for any program on campus, even if it historically was test optional. We just look closer at your transcript and individual grades. We are free online to apply on the Common App. There's no fee or waiver, just automatically free. And we just require your transcript, test scores, your counselor recommendation, and of course, everything that you're doing outside the classroom. We love to see your activities, leadership, community service, jobs, clubs, sports, responsibilities at home. We will take a holistic approach when reading applications. This is our timeline of dates to remember. We are an early action school, so that's non-binding. November 15th will be that deadline. So if you apply to us for early action and you're accepted, you don't have to come to Scranton, um, but you do find out December 15th in your process. December 15th is also when we begin reviewing regular decision applicants. March 1st is when we prefer that students apply by, although we do have rolling admission after early action. And then May 1st is just when we need to hear back from you if you would like to attend the university. With Scranton, we do merit-based scholarships. So when you apply, you'll be automatically considered for those. The requirements are on the screen and they range between 15 to 26,000 a year. Students who are, apply without test scores will still be considered for a merit-based scholarship. And you'll receive all of your merit-based scholarship information with your acceptance letter. When it comes to need-based aid, our Office of Financial Aid does work closely with us, and we just require the FAFSA form for any need-based aid. And they do work closely with our families, um, and the preferred filing date for the FAFSA form is between October 1st and February 1st. So we hope that you come check us out on campus. We are doing visits right now, small group sessions, Monday through Saturday, some Sundays as well. So if you feel comfortable coming to campus, feel free to schedule your visit on our website. And we're also doing virtual sessions if you would like to check us out in a virtual manner. Um, but thank you again. I'll put my contact information in the chat for everybody. Um, and just if you have any questions, let me know. Thank you. Up next, we have Seton Hall University. Hi, all. Good evening. My name is Rachel Dortch, and I am Assistant Director of Admissions at Seton Hall University. Um, just a little bit about me. So I'm here to help you guys out with the admissions process, whether it's reading your application, helping you out with majors, financial aid information. Um, think of me as kind of like your bridge to Seton Hall. Uh -oh. Let's see if we could get this going. Maybe. Yeah. Okay. Wow. Okay, let's get into it. So Seton Hall University from Brooklyn, we're about 
maybe 35, 45 minutes. We are a 30 minute train ride from Penn Station down in Manhattan. We are located in South Orange, New Jersey. The best way I can describe the area is we're in like a residential suburban area. Um, a lot of houses nearby. Anything you need is very close by to campus within walking distance, whether it's public transportation, grocery stores, restaurants, movie theaters, everything you need is very close by. We have an average class size of 21, which is typically like a high school class size, and a student to faculty ratio of 14 to 1. Um, those large lecture halls you might see on TV or at bigger institutions, you're really not going to see that on our campus. Uh, we really value the fact that our students have the opportunity to build close relationships with the staff and faculty that we have on our campus. We're a school of about 6,000 students, so it's large enough for you to know people's spaces, but you won't walk um, you won't know everyone's name walking around campus. One of my favorite things about the school is how diverse we are, and we're diverse in a lot of different ways, whether it's racially, socioeconomically, where students are coming from in the country. Um, students definitely have the opportunity of meeting people that are different from them, as well as meeting people that come from the same background and have the, and have the same interests as them as well. So we have a 45% diversity rate. We have a ton of academic programs at Seton Hall, 90 plus programs, any major you can think of we have. We have a lot of dual degree programs at Seton Hall. So if you hear me say things such as three plus three, uh, three plus two, what that means is that first number is how many years you would spend working on your undergraduate degree. And that second number is gonna be how many years you spend working on your professional degree. So anyone who might be interested in the health science field, that might be physical therapy, physician's assistant, occupational therapy. Those are all three plus three programs. So three years undergrad, three years working on your master's, and then you're done. What makes these programs appealing is that you're offered automatic admission into our master's programs. So if you're interested in health sciences, we have dual degree programs there. We have a dual degree law program. If you're interested in engineering, we have dual degree programs as well. Outside of health and education, we do have an amazing college of nursing, which is direct admit for our students. Um, and students get to participate in eight clinical rotations um, as well. Now, our overarching theme um, for all of our academic programs is this internship component. So it's what we're most known for academically at Seton Hall. We're ranked number five in the nation for providing internship opportunities for our students. We really don't want our students to be in the classroom. We want them to go out, learn, explore, and really develop that professional network while they're at Seton Hall, as opposed to waiting until after they graduate. Um, that little graphic that you're looking at is a very small fraction of where we will have where we will have students placed at, um, whether it's for internships or even getting jobs after graduation. We have an employment rate of 92% and Seton Hall graduate mid-career earnings are 50% higher than the national average. So a little bit about student life. Um, another favorite thing about our school is our students. I definitely love the students at Seton Hall. Um, I, what I like about them is that they really have a good balance between working hard and playing hard. So they understand they are there to get a good education and do the internships and go to class and all that good stuff. But they're also there to have a good time. They're there to have that college experience. Um, so our students are definitely heavily involved in our student organizations on campus this, whether it's anything from the dance team to Black Student Union to Mock Trial to Harry Potter Club. Um, my personal favorite is the Pancake Club on campus. I don't know what they do, but I, I just like they have a love for pancakes and they express that with our student body. Um, we also have Greek life available for our students. So we have 22 Greek organizations. The best way I can describe Greek life on campus is that it's there for students who want to participate. However, it's not overwhelming to the fact where students feel like they have to participate in order to get that college experience, just because there are so many other ways you can do that on our campus. Okay, money, because that's very important. 
98% uh, of our students are on some type of Seton Hall aid. That is not counting money that you might get from the government, from the FAFSA. That's just counting Seton Hall money that we provide our students. So we give over $100 million in grants and scholarship each year. We have something called a university scholarship, which is our merit-based award. And the way that works is the higher your GPA, the more money into, in a scholarship you are able to receive. That is automatically applied to accepted students' accounts, so no worries about applying to that scholarship. It's already applied to accepted students' accounts. We also have a whole host of special scholarships available to our students, and they are very wide ranging. Whether you are interested in the pep band, the debate team, if you have demonstrated a lot of community service in your neighborhood, there's scholarship money for you there as well. All of our special scholarships have a deadline of January 15th. Please do not forget that deadline, January 15th. You can apply to these special scholarships before you even receive a decision to the university. Some important dates for you. So we have two early action dates, November 15th and December 15th, and two regular decision dates, February 1st and March 1st. I like to tell students, try and get your application in by the December 15th deadline. That's a good timeline for you to receive your decision back in a timely manner. Now, things you need to submit, it has to be an application. It could be either the Common App or the Seton Hall app. There's no difference between the two, so it's up to you. Um, there is a fee for our application, but I'm your admissions counselor, so feel free to reach out to me. I can give you a fee waiver code, so no worries about that. You will need your essay, transcripts, a counselor report, which is like a recommendation letter, as well as a teacher recommendation letter. This year for all of our academic programs, except our joint MD program, if you want to go the full way and become a doctor, we have that for you. You will need test scores for that application. Reach out to me and I can give you more information on that. Outside of our joint MD program, you do not need test scores in order to submit an application and be considered for admission. I do encourage students to try and take your SAT and ACT, see what you get. If you are unsure how to submit your application, test optional or not, again, reach out to me, use me as a resource, and I would be happy to help you, um, uh, I guess, decide how to submit your application. Now, to give you an idea of our averages, we have an average GPA of 3.6, average SAT of 1235, and an average ACT of 27. Um, we have some high averages. So I like to tell students, if you're around that 81, 85 mark for your GPA, that's going to make you a strong candidate for admission. Um, I know I just talked about test, uh, test scores and transcripts, but at Seton Hall, we really do a holistic review of your application. Of course, we wanna know who you are as a student, but we also wanna know who you are as a person. So we are definitely taking um, consideration into your essay as well as your recommendation letters. Another thing that you can do to make your application stand out is um, demonstrate interest. We want students that are interested in Seton Hall. So attending events like these, um, any of our virtual or in-person events, we would love to have you on campus. Once the fall comes, I love to do student interviews with students. Um, they call them interviews. I like to say conversations. And again, it's just a good way for me to get to know you a little bit, match a name to a face when I come across your application. Um, and and it's a good opportunity for you to ask me any questions. So that's it, quick, easy, to the point. We are doing tours on campus. Um, if anyone would like to come visit us, we would love to have you. And I will put my contact information in the chat. Thank you. And last but not least, we will have Williams College. Hi, can everybody see my screen? I'm so sorry if, if you couldn't. Yes, we can see your screen. Okay, perfect, thank you. Um, 
So I think I'm the last one. So I'll try to make this super quick and focus on the things that I, I hope set, help set Williams apart as you're looking at many, many terrific schools. Um, my name is Solgi Lim. I'm the director of admission at Williams. And just really quickly want to say my name and photo and email are on the Williams website. So if you have any further questions after this, I'm really eager to hear from you. So Williams is located in the northwestern corner of Massachusetts in a really beautiful, naturally gorgeous town that is nothing like New York uh, in terms of uh, the setting, um, but brings students from all over the country, all over the world, and many students from New York City. Um, and so has a really cosmopolitan feel on campus, even though our location is, is rural, um, and again, in a really beautiful, gorgeous, natural setting. And it takes about three, three hours or so from New York City to drive to campus. I'm going to focus on just a couple of things that I think, um, or that I hope, will, will draw your attention. The first is an academic program at Williams called the Williams Tutorial. Uh, we're a small school, but we're really lucky to have tremendous resources. And one of the, the things that we're able to support uh, is the Williams Tutorial program. So what is it? Basically, it's a two-person class, two students and one professor meeting weekly. Um, it's optional, so you can choose it as one of your four classes in the fall or in the spring, and they're offered throughout the curriculum. Uh, they're offered for first-year students all the way through seniors, um, and it's a really intensive way to learn. It's a really terrific way to learn. Uh, it's a way to really deepen uh, your ability to articulate your thoughts, to deepen your understanding of the material, and to do so with a partner and a professor who you will get to know really well. Again, it's entirely optional, but more than um, two thirds of our students choose to take a tutorial during their four years at Williams, so a really uh, popular option. The second academic thing that I wanna highlight for you is uh, winter study. It's a really short three and a half week term that's squeezed in between the fall and the spring terms. Um, so don't worry, you do get a winter break. Um, you do have a spring break. Um, but winter study is there um, and is the perfect marriage of, um, I like to say, everything you love about breaks and vacation and just the freedom, the flexibility over your time you have and everything you love about being in school. It's the academic challenge, and your peers and your professors. Um, students are asked to take uh, four winter studies during their time at Williams. It is a required component, but you have tremendous flexibility in choosing the winter study courses. You can do something that's really hands-on. You can do something that kind of helps you explore an interest you developed in the classroom, or you can be off campus um, pursuing an internship or some other experiential learning opportunity. You might be wondering about the people that you might meet at Williams. Um, I just wanna off the bat give you a sense of your first year residential community. Um, so the entry is both the people you will live with and who and where you will live during your first year. Uh, we know that lots of students come in eager to meet people who are really different from them, who have different backgrounds and experiences and interests. But the most natural way to meet people is through shared academic and co-curricular interests. So the entry actually delivers to you from the get-go a group of peers who have really different interests and lived experiences from you. It's a microcosm of your first year class. And you live with them for the entire first year. Um, and you live with also two juniors excuse me, three or four juniors um, who are there for the entire year to guide you, to support you, to help uh, create community among this group of 40 or so first years. You might be wondering, okay, well, what can I do with the Williams degree? Uh, just really quickly, I want to highlight that we have uh, an incredibly well resourced and really committed career center, um, as well as a fiercely loyal community of alumni. So together, um, the Career Center and the Alumni Network support our students in career exploration. Uh, our Career Center likes to connect with students early and often when the stakes are lower and you're still kind of in that exploratory phase, they wanna connect with you to help uh, uncover interests and passions you have um, and really connect you to opportunities that can help you further explore those interests because there might be a career field out there that you haven't yet thought of that could be a perfect fit for you. Um, our, our students have had tremendous success upon graduation and finding careers that are fulfilling and meaningful um, and continue to be successful beyond their four years at Williams. Really quickly, I want to uh, just mention about admission. Uh, you all know better than I do what a, just an unusual, atypical, and at many moments very challenging this year has been for, for students. 
Um, all of my colleagues here in this Zoom know that. Um, everybody in admission offices across the country know that. So we just wanted to mention um, that already we have holistic admission processes, um, but this year in particular, we're especially sensitive to all the many different dynamics that students did not have control over, but that are affecting your personal lives and your academic lives. Um, so please, you know, feel free to use any part of the application to communicate those things to us in ways that feel natural and authentic to you. Uh, the application is a, an opportunity to brag a little bit about yourself. It's also an opportunity to tell us a little bit more about things that may not necessarily um, have been asked in other parts of the application. Um, and of course, um, uh, you know, please uh, make sure that there's any, if there's anything that, that you feel you need to know that, that you communicate that to us. Um, finally, I just want to end, end on affordability at Williams. Um, we're a school that has tremendous financial aid resources. Uh, we, we're more than half of our students are receiving financial aid and nearly 20% pay nothing to attend. Um, and I believe we're the only school in the country where textbooks are free for all students on financial aid um, and is not limited to expenses uh, that are related to tuition and room and board. Uh, but we really have a comprehensive and wraparound and sort of consistent approach to financial aid throughout your four years um, and really focus on eliminating any hidden costs. So if cost is a concern, if paying for college is a concern, I'd really encourage you to hop on our financial aid website. You'll see two calculator icons that look like uh, the images in the, in the slide here. And one is two minutes, one is 15 minutes, um, but filling those out will give you a sense of uh, what you might expect by way of financial aid. And that's it for me. Thank you, Williams College. So at this time, this concludes our virtual session. Thank you for joining us. As you exit out, you will be presented with a four question survey. Your feedback is always appreciated. You can sign up for more sessions like this on our website. And lastly, this recording will be available early next week at strivescan.com slash Brooklyn Tech. Thank you again for joining us and we wish you the best of luck during your college search.